Okay, year 10, this is a, a short video to help you with lesson three, um, which is a little bit of calculating with limits of accuracy. So I've just got two examples for you and a couple of rules for you to note down somewhere um, or remember. So calculating with limits of accuracy is actually one of the very few things that we do in maths that will help you in real life because um, if you over or underestimate um, rounding, it can cost you money in certain situations. So, for example, if you want to carpet, uh, buy carpet for a room. So, we want to carpet a room. And we have measured the room to be 6 metres by 9 metres. But we're only able to measure, because of all the things in the way of the room, to the nearest metre. And we want to know how much carpet to order. If we get too little, we'll end up with gaps in the carpet. If we get too much, we've wasted money on carpet we didn't need to buy. So we need to work out the minimum and maximum area of the room. So we know we are definitely going to buy the right amount of carpet. So let's work out the error intervals of these two measurements first of all. So the six metres has been measured to the nearest metre, so it could have been anything from 5.5 .5 to 6.5 metres, the true measurement of that width of the room. The depth of the room, again measured to the nearest metre, could have been anything, I'm going to call this one Y, from 8.5 to 9.5 metres. So that's the error interval of these measurements. Now, in order to be able to work out how much we need to order, you need to know that maximum area of this room is going to be found by working out the maximum of the width multiplied by the maximum of the depth. So the maximum is going to be 6.5 times 9.5 metres, which is, let me just reach my calculator, 6.5 times 9.5, 61.75 metres squared. The smallest area that this could be, this room, is found by multiplying the minimum that it could be by the minimum it could be for the Depth, so height times depth, the minimum times the minimum is going to be 5.5 .5 times 8.5, which is 46.75 metres squared. Now, as you can see, there's a massive difference actually in terms of square metres between the minimum that it could have been with our errors of um, measuring and the maximum it could be. So you can see how it would be quite easy to go wrong in real life, order the wrong amount of carpet and be very sad. So that's how to deal with multiplying error intervals. Minimum times minimum will give you a minimum. Maximum times maximum will give you a maximum. I know it seems like common sense, but when it comes to dividing, which is what we're going to look at next, it's important that you remember max times max equals max, min times min equals min. Okay, so let's do an example involving division. Okay, so we're going to look at speed, because that's always a good one. Lots of questions end up on speed with error intervals. Let's say I measure moving 120 metres, and that's measured to the nearest 10 metres. Okay, so we've travelled 120 metres, and it has taken 30 seconds to the nearest second. And I want to work out the maximum speed that was travelled and also the minimum speed that was travelled. So we start by working out our error intervals. That's where you start getting some marks. So the error interval for this has been measured to the nearest 10 metres. So speed, let's call this one X and this one Y. It could have been 115 metres really. Or up to 125 metres. That's the error interval for x. And y has been me uh, measured to the nearest second, so it could have been 29.5 up to 
to 30.5, but not including it. No equal sign there. So how do I work out the max speed? Well, it's not quite the same as the multiplying rule, which is just multiplying the like ones together. To find out maximum speed, you're going to have to calculate maximum distance divided by minimum time. So dividing with error intervals, max is always max divided by min. And the minimum, the slowest speed, is going to be worked out by doing the minimum distance divided by the, the longest speed, so max time. So if you're dividing by something bigger, you're going to get a smaller answer. Okay. So with this example here, we've got max speed is going to be 125 divided by 29.5, and it's going to be metres per second. And your minimum is going to be 115 divided by 30.5. It's going to be in metres per second as well. So let me just quickly work out the answers to this. And you should be all set to have a go at the questions on lesson three. So for this one, we've got 4.24, rounded to two decimal places, metres per second. And for this one, on the right, the minimum speed is just 3.77 meters per second and this error is caused just by some very small errors in measuring okay so what I want you to remember is when you divide you're going to have opposites and when you multiply you're going to have the same so max times max and min times min hope that wasn't too confusing have a quick go at lesson three thank you